Hey, you ever been to Chancellor Park? That's where I live. My name is Tevin Dillard. I live in Chancellor Park. I mow lawns, mowing, edging, grass cutting legend. I sure am glad to join me here on this podcast. I want to let you know what's going on in my neck of the woods. Now, I started out years ago on the YouTubes and then the TikToks and the Instagrams now and the whatnots. I got the websites, the tavendiller.com, but right now, I want to clue you into what's happening in my neck of the woods on the Tavendiller podcast. You here? I'm here. I'm glad you joined me. Now I'm going to send it over to myself. This is like the pre-introduction, but let's get on to the real show today. I'm glad you joined me here. Bank, bank. Hey, y'all guys. Welcome to the Tabby Dillard Podcast. How are you doing today? Boy, it's been cold. There's been snow. There's been ice. If you in Arkansas, you know about it. My friends in Tennessee, they've been shoveling it too. It's been chilly. I don't know where you at. It ain't a bad thing to be cold. If you got the right clothes, you know, you got a sweatshirt or, you know, a beanie or gloves or fingerless gloves. I'm Gene Watkins had some uh, fingerless gloves. I mentioned that last week in the podcast episode. It'll keep your hands warm, but I mean, your fingers, forget about it. They expose to the elements, you know, and it's good to have that if you got to do something nimble with your fingers and you got to maybe fix a car or feed a baby bird or I don't know what you're doing, but boy, you better have some pockets to shove them hands into uh, soon enough, because if, boy, that nor'easter blow in, your fingers get cold. Uh, you make you uh, got to figure out some way to keep them warm if you got them fingerless gloves. But I hope you're staying warm wherever you at today. Uh, today's episode, this podcast episode, gonna be a little bit different. Talking about dreams, talking about dreams I had. I had a lot of dreams. I don't know if you had a lot of dreams. Some folks remember their dreams. Some folks don't. Some folks say I don't dream. Yeah, I just wake up, head hit the pillow, I go to sleep, I wake up, it's a beautiful thing, I don't remember nothing about that. Sometimes in your dreams, boy, you get mad at folks, like it's so real, you wake up mad at them, and you think, okay, well, they didn't do that in real life, I gotta, I gotta get over that, and I can't hold a grudge at them all day long, because that was in my dream, you know, that ain't on them kind of thing. But however you do it, uh, they are dreams, they do exist. I think it's been proved somehow that people dream, I know I do, anyhow. Uh, sometimes I remember them, sometimes I don't. For me, though, it happens when I eat too late. You know about that? Like, it don't really matter what the food is. It ain't like, boy, every time I eat a Snickers bar, I have weird dreams. It ain't like that. Although once, I think I made white gravy with spoiled milk, or at least it's getting close to spired, and so that probably has something to do with it. But then the other times, it's good food, but I just ate it too late. Sometimes that happens when time gets away from you and you end up eating too late and then you off to bed. Like you ain't trying to like make it hard on yourself. All of a sudden just one thing led to another and you might peckish and you can't just go to bed and eat your dreams. You want to eat a little food before uh, you get into bedtime. So that's how that go. And for me, then I, I, I get off to dreamland after I eat late and it's a very curious dreamland. Very curious. Like one time I had this dream about cowboy squirrels. Another time I had one about being in charge of the choir at the Macy's Day Parade. And then I had this dream about the possum peg leg dream. Now, if you have watched my videos like on the interweb, you know that I've shared these dreams with you before. Now, I'm going to talk a little more in depth about them today. I think the first dream I ever shared might have been back in 2007. So we're talking 17 years ago, uh, around that time. And it's on the YouTubes. I'll actually, I'll leave a link for you today in the video show notes if you want to go watch it. Now, you may be saying, uh, Tavin, why in the world do I go watch it if you're going to tell me about it? Well, that ain't the one I'm going to tell you about today. I'm going to tell you about a few other ones. But I will tell you this much. I know in that dream back in 2007, it had to do with a crop duster, me on a prairie with a little pioneer child, and uh, donuts was the currency instead of money. Uh, so if any of that interests you, uh, you can check out that link today to, to see that old video uh, 17 years ago. My goodness, I've been dreaming for a while. So anyhow, I don't do with, do that well with them late night meals. That's all I'm saying. I do love them at the time. You know, at the time, it's a beautiful thing. But it's just once you get into dreamland, you're like, hello, what's going on here? And then some folks, they try to figure out the meaning of a dream. Like, what's that mean? What's that represent? Uh, I don't know nothing about that. I just know, uh, well, I ate late, and then this happened, and here you go kind of thing. Uh, so in this first dream I want to tell you all about, I'm on a raft, and I made out, it's made out of honeycomb cereal. You ever had the honeycomb cereal? You know, it's like a big honeycomb. 
uh, when I had it as a kid, as a treat, it wasn't my everyday cereal. Heck, we didn't have everyday cereal in a trailer, but them honeycombs, they was big, they got holes in them, and you get them in your mouth, and that milk would spill through them honeycombs, and in the roof of your mouth, forget about it. Forget about it. It'd tear it up, but always worth it. Like, don't get me wrong, the mouth roof thing wasn't necessarily fun, but don't even compare with, like, burning your tongue to hot chocolate. I remember them honeycombs, they was in them big old boxes. They bigger than a normal box because the cereal was bigger. But that's where they get you. You feel like you're getting more. Then you open up and you're like, oh, this this one piece of cereal is like five times a regular piece of cereal. Plus, there's holes in it. You know, so, it's it, you know, they get you. But, boy, it was mesmerizing. If I could get a hold of some honeycombs, I liked it. So, here I am in this dream, though. I'm on a raft made out of honeycomb cereal, and I'm barefoot. You know how in dreams stuff don't make sense? Well, this ain't any different. Like, you ain't asking, how's this raft made out of honeycomb? Or why ain't it sinking? That ain't what's going on in the dream. You're trying to get somewhere on the raft. That's all you know. Uh, you just barefoot on a raft, though, and it's made out of honeycomb. And it's just tearing up the bottom of my feet in the dream the way it would tear up the roof of my mouth in real life. Now, I didn't ask, like, where are my shoes in the dream? Because you just accept it. It is what it is. That's what I do in the dream. I'm on a raft made of honeycomb with bare feet. And I'm trying to get somewhere. So my little feet was starting to feel, boy, just tore it up. And I don't know how to avoid that, y'all guys. If you ain't never had honeycomb cereal, like, and you're going to go try it this week, uh, just be prepared. It Do that to the roof of your mouth. I don't know. Maybe you grow like a roof mouth callus if you have it often enough. And then you ain't, you ain't worried because your mouth is just tough. And then you can have Cap'n Crunch, too, while you're at it at that point. I don't know. I didn't go to school for cereal. So I don't know how that worked. But I'm just telling you, spec it if you're going to get it. So I'm paddling this raft, uh, and I look yonder shore uh, where I'm headed, like I'm going a certain direction, and I see a pot belly pig playing a harmonica. I don't think he's full grown, but he wasn't no piglet, so somewhere in between. He might have been a teenage pig, for all I know. But he, he knew how to put a, play a little number on that harmonica, and he playing it over there, and I'm heading kind of toward him. But I do know... Uh, he was he was playing next to like a, a little herd of squirrels. So he's do to do to do, you know, harmonica like that away. And next to him was this herd of squirrels. I don't know if they was friends. I don't know if he's seen them there or if they snucked up on him. I don't know none of that. I'm just telling you what I do know. Uh, I, I don't know if they call herds of squirrels either. I know like you can herd cattle, uh, but they was dressed like cowboys. Maybe that's why I think they was a herd. So I'm barefoot on this honeycomb raft. Pot-bellied pig is playing a harmonica next to these cowboy squirrels. And then they started laughing at me. Like the cowboy squirrels, you know, I guess I was in their territory. Or I look silly to them. And so now they teasing me in this dream. And I don't know what they thought was so funny. Maybe it was my bare feet. Maybe it was the raft. Was they just mean squirrels dressed like cowboys? Like, I don't know. I ain't sure. All I know is that I got fired up. And I hollered at them scores. I said, like, y'all couldn't round up a wild horse if your life depended on it. Well, them tides turned pretty quick, and them squirrels started crying. So they went from happy boy, they high on the hog, not, not literally because uh, the hog was next to them playing the harmonica. But you get the idea. You know, that's a, that's a saying. And these squirrels are, boy, they think they, they in their own world, and they run in that world. And all of a sudden, they go from laughing to crying. I mean, I insulted their livelihood, so I get it. I told them cowboy squirrels they couldn't round up a wild horse. Boy, that got to the heart of it, didn't it? And they start tapping each other on the back with their little squirrel paws, trying to console each other. You know, like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. We're going to get through this kind of thing. But they was really battling them emotions there once I hollered at them like that away. Now, I don't know if you ever seen a herd of squirrels dressed like cowboys crying, but it's kind of sad to see. I mean, it really was. At this point, though, I was just fed up with this honeycomb raft. I was like, I cannot get my bare feet tore up anymore. I done been yelled at by cowboy squirrels. I got to get off this thing. And I said, I'm out of here. So I just jump in the lake. Right then and there, I jump off that raft into the lake, you know, because I ain't close enough to reach the shore yet. But as soon as I jumped the lake into it, it froze over. So now I'm on top of ice, which was kind of cool on my torn up bare feet. You know, I wasn't mad at that yet. But, you know, you can't be on frozen, you know, ice too long. I mean, I guess ice is always frozen, but you get the idea. You can't be in cold, wet, or bare feet too long before it starts to affect you. So... I, I get up and I start trying to slide walk across that ice to the shore 
and the ice was really suiting them feet. I start making my, making my way over to that shore, and that pot-bellied pig sees me getting close. Now, I don't know why he's scared. I wasn't yelling at him, and he really wasn't a bad harmonica player. But, boy, I could see it in his eyeballs, too. His eyes got big like dinner plates, and he just was like, bank, bank, like he was thinking, and he wasn't thinking good thoughts. Like he was thinking scared thoughts by the look on his face. He throwed his harmonica, and then he squealed off into the wilderness back, you know, back behind the, the shoreline was just woods, and off he goed, left his harmonica. I don't know if he had another one. I didn't know if he think he was going to circle back. I didn't know if maybe he's so scared he didn't think about that. And then them squirrels scattered everywhere. I ain't sure where they was off to. But at this point in the dream, I wasn't sure much of what to expect. And I just wanted to get to shore. And as soon as I step on that shore, there's a horse playing a butterscotch disc like a drum size of a tracker tire. You know them butterscotch discs like Grandpa's pocket? You know, you got a granddaddy and he reaching his to a po into his pocket. He got a cinnamon disc, butterscotch disc, some lint, and like a couple nickels. Well, it was a big old butterscotch disc. Now, you think of a, a horse playing the drums, they bigger than a human, and they got them hooves. So you got a horse with hooves playing a big old butterscotch disc drum size of a tracker tire, y'all guys. And oh, he just beating on that drum. Dun, 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 dun. And I told him, hey, you better quiet down. Don't you know there's some squirrels looking for you? Because that's what they do. They round up wild horses. And I figured he was wild. I didn't get a chance to really get to know him, you know, in a dream. But I figured, boy, they was after him. Because uh, that's what they do. They wrangle them horses, uh, cowboy squirrels. And when I asked that horse if he knew they was looking for him, he just looked at me and he said, nay. Now, I don't know what that dream means, but when I woke up, my feet was itchy. I do know that means I need to eat earlier. So that's how that one went. I don't know any more about that dream. I ain't thought a lot more about it uh, other than just retelling what happened, but I ain't tried to figure out the meaning of none of that. But do I eat earlier? Most of the time I do, but not always. And you may be thinking that's a pretty crazy dream to have. And well, I don't know if it's my craziest though. I mean, you could be the judge. This next one, wasn't because of something I ate out of a fast food place, nothing like that. No, it's just your standard home cooking, you know, too close to bedtime in the trailer. So I put together a pimento cheese and white bread sandwich, some shelf-stable spam, too close to bedtime. Uh, you know, so it's a little, you got some spam on there, you got pimento cheese, you got white bread. I know, I know what you're asking. Why don't I learn? But I just, I just had to, had to get through that. So I was hungry. It's good, and I ain't doing this every night, y'all guys. Please understand that. Today, I'm just putting a few of these together on a podcast, but they didn't have them one night after the other. So in this stream, anyways, I was directing a section of a choir, and I am putting two and three together, saying that pimento cheese, a white bread, the shelf stable spam, all that went into this stream. I mean, I'm figuring, you know, that's the math I'm doing at least. So that's the first clue, though. Me directing a choir was the first clue that this was only a dream. And you know about that song, Another One Bites the Dust? did a doomp 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 Well, that's what the choir was singing, and I had to help them harmonize. Where, you might be asking, Tabin? Well, we was at a float building event for the Macy's Day Parade, and I was in charge of the tenors. But I had to talk to everybody so it'd be quiet while I worked. I needed it to be quiet. And these tenors was mad. And I mean, they was fired up and there was no bread pudding at these choir rehearsals and that really got into them. I don't know why they needed bread pudding to be able to uh, work on their choir rehearsal performance for the Macy's Day Parade. But I'm telling you, I was in the middle of it having to figure all this out. I was like, who cares about bread pudding, y'all guys? We got to figure out how to harmonize another one bites the dust before them performance robes arrive. I guess we had some robes that was coming in hot and we had to already know our song when they showed up and then they could put on the robes and then get out there and perform, you know, pretty quick. Like, I don't know. I don't know. You know how it is in dreams. There's, there's this pressure to get something done and then it makes sense that you have to get it done, but ain't nobody stopping and asking why in the world do we have to get any of this done? But when you think about it later, it just don't make sense. Well, here we are. So all the tenors upped and quit on me because they didn't like the situation one bit. But they didn't leave and go home. Oh, no. In the dream, they stayed right there and started arm wrestling for French fries, saying that the French fries give them the strength to build the float. Do you, you, you catching all that? And if you're like, no, Tavin, I ain't. I'm with you. 
I don't know why these tenors that needed to harmonize another one bites to dust, waiting on their choir robes to arrive and mad that there wasn't no bread pudding, they quit, but then they start arm wrestling and the winner gets french fries so they'll have the strength they need to build a float. Come again? I was like, y'all ain't building the float. Y'all standing on it and performing. Like a name mind says, gonna build a float. I'm like, the whole reason y'all is here is to perform on a float. Ain't nobody asking you to build a float for the Macy's Day Parade. Like they just had to learn their parts and sing. Well, this was news to them, and they all throwed up right there because they got stage fright. So I guess they got real nervous. You know how your nerves get to them if you got to do something in front of a crowd of people? And apparently in their minds, they was like, we building a float, and then we out of here. I'm thinking, no, y'all guys, y'all the choir. Y'all got to perform, and they all throwed up. Every single one of them throwed up right there. They're scared. So how in the world could this be? I woke up at this point. I'll tell you right now, y'all guys, and I never did find out if the float got built or if they learned to harmonize another one bites the dust. And you know how some dreams you want to keep dreaming and you want to go back into them, like fall back asleep and see how it ends? Well, this wasn't one of them. I was good to wake up on that one. You probably see that it ain't what I eat, but when I eat. Because I got another dream here, y'all guys, the final one for this episode, and I ate something different from what I had in the first two dreams. So it ain't the food. But it is the food, if you know what I mean. Kind of when you had it. So I had chocolate gravy before bed. And chocolate gravy is one of the best things I ever ate in my life. Some folks have heard of it and grown up with it. And then it seems like quite a food people ain't never heard of chocolate gravy. But it's exactly what it sounds like. Except it's like breakfast food. You eat it with biscuits and butter. And you got that chocolate gravy on. Or you can eat it with toast and butter and chocolate gravy. But it is a beautiful thing. Now, chocolate gravy, uh, you can have it for supper, just like you have breakfast for supper, and you ain't nobody mad at that, but I'm just telling you, if you think, oh, chocolate, that's like dessert. No, this is the main course. This is the main course, and you just pour that gravy on there. Now, if you ain't never had it, let this be your invitation to go try some, and this week, if you have to choose between honeycomb cereal or chocolate gravy, for, for sure, you got to choose that chocolate gravy. It's amazing. Honeycomb will be on the shelf waiting for you whenever you decide to do that. But I, I done warned you about the Rupert of my thing. You probably already know that, though. So that's what I ate, the chocolate gravy, uh, before. And inside my dream, there's a possum with a peg leg standing outside Rickard's grocery store begging for shortbread cookies. Now, I don't know why. I don't know why, right? We, at the, we should be at the point now where we all understand. We don't know why, but I'm telling you, he was, he was serious about it. So this peg leg possum's right outside the door, you know, where folks set up for like Girl Scout cookies or canned food drives or that kind of thing. He right there, and he's he's specifically asking for shortbread cookies. Now, I don't know if it's a Pacific brand or he just wants them. They ain't got to be wrapped or nothing like that. He just wants them. So, uh, and he ain't begging nice. That's the other thing. Well, he kind of is where he'd ask nice, but if folks didn't give him one, he'd growl and kind of hiss at him like a possum do. And then he'd take a swipe at him with that wooden peg leg of his. So he'd, with, it, with his good, like strong possum haunch, he'd hold himself up and then he'd take a swipe with that peg leg at the person that didn't give him a shortbread cookie. Well, he took a swipe and hit my meemaw with that wooden peg leg of his in my dream. Got her right in the shin. You know that smarts. I mean, getting a hit, hit in the shin with anything hard, I mean, it really stings. I mean, it really stings. You ever been at a family reunion and, boy, a horseshoe gets astray? Somebody tosses that, and then it bounces, and, boy, the sound of a horseshoe hitting the shin, boy, ain't nothing like it. Makes my shin hurt just hearing it hit somebody else's shin. But anyways, it wasn't a, it wasn't a horseshoe here. It was a possum's wooden peg leg hitting my meemaw's shin, and it smarts. Well, she pulled a violin out of a burlap knapsack and took the swing at that possum with this violin. Why'd she have a burlap knapsack? Why'd she have a violin? Hey, we in a dream, y'all guys. Anything's going. So he ducked, and she missed him with that violin, but that possum, he got unsteady, you know, on that regular leg and that, uh, that peg leg, and he falled over with that wooden peg leg. Turned out the leg was fake. When he hit the ground, he had a regular possum leg there, and he didn't need no peg leg. He's trying to, I guess, get people to sympathize with him that he can't stand on two regular possum's legs, but he could. He had a regular possum leg there. He didn't need that peg leg. Kevin Rickert came outside of the grocery store where all this was going on. He gathered all them shortbread cookies that possum had got from folks and said, 
time to make a smoothie. Well, from the ground, that possum started crying, and he yelled. He said, I'm allergic. I don't know what it means, but I'm telling you, Kevin Rickard had an armful of shortbread cookies, and he said it was time to make a smoothie, and he's back into that grocery store, and boy, that possum with the peg leg that wasn't really a peg leg was so uh, allergic and sad. Uh, I guess he's allergic to smoothies. Like, I don't know. About that time, a catfish on a dirt bike showed up to pick up that possum. So they buddies, like they buddies and they, they know these things. And that possum hopped on the back of that bike and they peeled out of there, headed to the lake like they was going to pull off some more hijinks or something like that. I just know in the dream, you know, when that catfish came, he had a hat on backwards too. He's on the dirt bike and it's like that possum knew, you know, when his buddy pulled up, he was done at the grocery store and he already was, Kevin already told him. You know, so that, that's how it was. And I'll tell you this, though. That possum didn't end up with one shortbread cookie. He left empty pod. Not today, peg leg possum. And then I woke up after that one. I felt like I had some closure because he didn't get away with swindling them folks, you know, like he was hoping to do. Out of them shortbread cookies with that fake peg leg, both his possum legs were just fine. I don't know what any of it means, y'all, but I did draw that picture of the possum peg leg dream. And I put that on a shirt, uh, you know, back in December's. Uh, so I'll put that in the show notes too today under the, uh, you know, my 2007 dream that I didn't tell y'all today. If you want to see my first dream that I shared uh, on the interwebs. And then there's the possum peg leg shirt um, in the show notes today. If you want to see, you're like, boy, I, c I can kind of imagine that dream in my mind. eye. well, I drawed it, you know, because folks say maybe you should write down your dreams to remember them. Well, I guess I one bettered it because I drawed it with the possum and the peg leg and the, and the catfish on the dirt bikes there too. But what are you dreaming about? I'll tell you right now, I could go for a burger, milkshake, pimento cheese, white bread, shelf-stable spam, biscuits, butter, chocolate gravy, any of that sounds good to me, but not too late. And I'll probably hold off on a honeycomb for a while, you know, kind of like that away. Well, I sure appreciate y'all joining me today on the Tab and Dillard podcast. Check out them show notes for all this going on. You'll see that 20 out 7 dream. You'll see the possum peg leg shirt, and you'll see how to get in touch with me. You can text me 501-322-6249, or you can shoot me an email at tabandillard at gmail.com. I am doing some uh, sponsorship stuff for folks, different you know little businesses around the country to reach out. Hey, can you do a commercial? So, uh, And that's the easiest way to get at me is that email address. If you have a business inquiry, um, holler at me that way. And hey, I ain't saying don't hope your dreams come true, but I will say if you ain't been teased by squirrels dressed like cowboys while you barefoot on a raft made out of honeycomb cereal, you having a pretty good week. Me, I'm Tabin Dillard. This is the Tabin Dillard Podcast. Till next time, y'all guys. We'll see you later. <laughs>